everybody. Welcome back to the Omaha Places podcast. We're your hosts. My name is Connor and I'm the founder of Omaha Places and 402 Social. And I'm Delaney, the digital content coordinator for Omaha Places. And welcome back to the podcast this week. <laughs> How are you feeling? Um, I'm feeling okay. I still feel swollen like a little bit and really? everyone keeps saying that I don't look swollen, yeah, but don't. maybe I'm just imagining it now. Maybe I I've have that dysmorphia that they talk about after looking at myself with a yeah. swollen face for so long. Yeah. I have never gotten wisdom teeth out. So how long is the recovery process usually you supposed know, to be? This was all talked about while I was on drugs. Oh, <laughs> so that's I not very effective. I literally woke up and I, they were telling me that I was a chatterbox. Really? The whole time. I think it actually, the recovery takes about two weeks, but the procedure took 45 minutes, just like that, all four okay. teeth. And then, yeah, I woke up and I was just talking and talking and talking. And they're like, on day five, you have to start rinsing with salt water. And I was like, can I use kosher salt? That's what I prefer. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I didn't remember any of that. <laughs> kosher salt. <laughs> like a lot. approved? <laughs> Um, yes, okay. any salt. Okay. He's like, any salt works, just not garlic salt. I was <laughs> okay. like, okay. And then I was asking him all about how you like break the root off from the tooth. Uh -huh. Like I was intrigued by that process as well. You're like, tell me the science behind yeah, it. Yeah, tell me the science. <laughs> now that I'm like, you know, not really there, I'd like to yeah. know. <laughs> like I couldn't have asked that before. Yeah. But yeah, That's funny, funny, funny well, stories. Glad it went well. Glad to have you back. Um, it's good to be back. Yeah, last week was a bit of a roller coaster, but we're back. <laughs> we're yeah, doing all the things. Okay, so besides your recovery uh, time, where else have you been this week? I also want to say Delaney only took one day off of work after all this. Like you were back the next day working. So at Open Omaha, Open Omaha. I think I yeah. did actually take a little bit of a break on Saturday, but I okay. ended up going Sunday. So, oh, you did just okay. a few places. I really didn't get to make all the ones that I wanted to go to for Open Omaha. You went to quite a bit though. Like I, I saw the stories that you posted and I was like, whoa, I wasn't expecting you to go to that many. Well, some of them I knew I wanted to go to, and then I wanted to hit a few different places. So downtown, I knew I wanted to go to that um downtown omaha oasis oh yeah like i wanted to see that yeah just because it's not open all the time it's kind of like an airbnb yeah um and that was cool but i did like the rooftop part of it mm -hmm. and then while i was down there i hit the bemis center because i'd never been there i went to Kaneko. okay that how you say it Kaneko? Yeah. um never been there just walked around really quick mm -hmm. i tried to do it in like four hours three or yeah. four hours and then headed to um noma Oh, cool. North Omaha Music and Arts Center. Mm -hmm. And they were actually doing a drum like workshop with the audience. Oh, that's really cool. So it was, it was really cool. Nice. Um, and then I went to Maple Street Construct, which is in Benson. I don't even know. And that it's is. kind of like an art gallery. That's what I would consider it. And okay. it's open during Benson First Friday. I just didn't, had never been oh, in there. Cool. Um, so it was fun to explore places I'd never been before, even ones that are in my neighborhood I just didn't know about. Yeah. Awesome. Well, glad so, you had yeah. a good time. Go to Open Omaha next year. Yeah, that happens every year. Okay, where where else have you been besides events and stuff? So I went to Cattle Call. Um, this was yeah. before I got my wisdom teeth taken out, so yes. that was super great. Um, I tried oysters for the first time. Oh, wow. And I don't think I like them. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't surprise <laughs> me at all. Oysters are definitely like the most... Not the easiest of seafood to so get So there was like, <laughs> there's like one small oyster and then a huge one. And my mom has never had oysters either. So I kind of like shoved her in the big one because <laughs> I knew I didn't want it. Yeah. And she just about like spit it out. I was like, uh-uh, uh-uh, <laughs> you're going to swallow that. <laughs> She's like, it was just so huge. Oh my gosh. But Did they teach you how to like do it with the little fork, like- basically get it off the shell i think it was already done like oh, okay. it had been dressed and stuff okay and it was just but you hanging like out and it yeah just okay yep <laughs> <laughs> cheers <laughs> it's a good thing to say you've tried but yeah i don't know that i'll have it again yeah, and it was from shucks you. and if you like oysters shucks is a great place to go wait so cattle call gets their mm -hmm. oysters from shucks yep. interesting okay and i yeah, I don't think there's a lot of places in Omaha that don't get it from Shucks, actually. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, cool. so um, they also, 
um, the Momo station. Mm -hmm. um, that's an inner rail. It's the same owners. And this will be their third. They also own Saffron. Yes. The yeah. Indian, is it Indian cuisine? Yeah. Yeah, Saffron but is great. Yeah, great food. Okay. He served us an eight course meal. Wow. Essentially. Okay, this is good information. I was not prepared for that. Because Eric and I talked about cattle call on the podcast last week, but neither one of us had been there. So I was like, we'll have Delaney give her update <laughs> next week. So this is good, good info. Yeah, eight dishes. I was That's not prepared to eat that much. I was actually going to late nights after, and I'm so glad I did because I needed to walk it off. But yeah. my mom was like, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't eat all this. I'm like, I was totally unprepared yeah. for this. I didn't expect it at all, but every Dang. single thing was great. Really? And if you like cool. oysters, you like oysters, but it was still yeah. like, I could taste like cucumber Ooh. in the oyster. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we have posted our video about cattle call, so you guys can go check that out. And, and you can rent a room there for parties okay. and stuff. Love that. So I need to go see what the space looks like. Cause in my head, it's still, it's very narrow. Old, the or it's L shaped cafe. I can't even remember what the cafe used to be called and I'm not even sure either because it's been closed since I moved here I want to yeah. say I went there like right when I moved back to Omaha and I really liked the food at that old cafe but obviously they completely closed down so yeah I want to see like how it looks now and it's pretty and the drinks were also very good and yeah. they're a late night food spot so if you're looking for something to do after like an Orpheum show um it's just down the street yep. and stop in Get your late night eats. Nice. Love that. We're always on the hunt for those. Yeah. Okay. One place that I went that I think I talked about last week too in the event section was the summer Saturday at Heartwood Preserve. So this is going to be go going on every Saturday in August. So you guys still have a couple weeks left by the time this episode comes out. I also went with my mom. It was a bring your mom to work kind of week. For sure. <laughs> um, but we had a really wholesome evening. That event is super family friendly, which is really cool. And the space that they have it in is like perfect. So Hartwood Preserve is like that new area off 144th and Dodge. It used to just be like cornfields. Um, but they, there's a bunch of new buildings going in there, a bunch of restaurants and stuff, but then they have this like concrete slab, like not slab, just a concrete area that I think they probably put there specifically to have stuff like this. So it's the, like the layout is perfect. They have a little, um, area with picnic tables and they had a bunch of umbrellas and stuff because it was a pretty hot day. And then the, when the movie started, so you're facing 144th when you're watching the movie because the screen faces like away from 144th but you're like far enough away that you're not hearing the cars but then you can like watch the cars go by but then like the sunset makes it really pretty it was just like a really cool environment I liked it a lot I like that they had trees that mm -hmm. were providing a little bit of shade for people as well. Yeah, the trees are still pretty baby, baby since they like just planted them, but that's why they have the umbrellas and stuff too. But yeah, even on a hot day, which it was very hot the day that I went, it was still pretty nice. And obviously it was in the evening, so like it cools down a little bit. And they have food trucks and yeah, what have, else did they have there? Food trucks. They had a DJ who did um, like kept doing these trivia questions and it was really cute because he'd like come on his microphone, ask a trivia question and basically to win the trivia prize, um, you had to like run up to his booth and tell him the answer and the first person to get the correct answer like wins a prize. So anytime he would like say the trivia question, all the kids would rush over to his booth and he was like in the far corner so you could see all the kids like running across the the whole event <laughs> so it was really cute so it'd be a great place to like take kids they can just run around they had a bounce house for the kids they had like face painting and a balloon guy and Fun. yeah just like very wholesome wholesome yeah. vibes so yeah that is going to be happening um every friday or every friday every saturday saturday festivities start at 5 p.m the movie starts at dusk so you guys should go check it out yeah and you're always asking us for kid-friendly activities so yes. this is the perfect time it to is. go it is where else have you been i went to the tarot room last night which is a speakeasy inside churco is it tarot room is that Tar how you say it in my head i was saying tarot I think it's tarot. Tarot. Oh. Tarot cards? T-A-R-O-T. Oh, is it called tarot? I'll look it up for you to make sure. 
<laughs> but he said tarot. Okay. So I'm okay, assuming go with he that, knows then. what he's talking about. Yeah. Because I was, was like, reading it in my I was head. on the fence with it too. But yeah. So the whole idea behind the speakeasy, because I wanted to know like what, if this was always Churko's plan, because they just opened what, November, October last year? Yeah. I feel like it's coming up on a year. Yeah. And they have great food there. So definitely check them out if you haven't. Um, they're clear out, clear out west. Um, I want to say like a hundred and <laughs> out there, <laughs> it's like and kind out of there. by kind of between Chalco and Elkhorn ish okay. on Q street. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's a ways for us Benson folks and yeah. council bluff. I took someone from council bluff. So they had like, it was <laughs> oh during rush gosh. hour. So she had like a 45 minute tour. Oh my gosh. I was like, thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so Churco is means circus in Italian, I think. Okay. Um, and so they wanted that to be like the big tent is Churco. Oh. And then the tarot room is kind of like those little side tents that you go behind yeah. and it's like filled with all these weird, like interesting it's, lady things yeah. like the black birds and the murals of women on the wall. It's just yeah. very like, ooh, cool. Like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it. That's quite sure. It's like I know a witchy. Talking witchy. Okay. okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, but it was super cool. The drinks were really good. Um, I talked to the bartender. He crafted them all. Wow. And so they're like, it's like craft cocktail, but like next level. Like he puts okay. a lot of, there's a lot of processes behind the scenes that we don't know about. Yeah. So <laughs> they take a long time to make, but they created this idea like a snackery, which is like a drink that you can have immediately when you get there. Uh -huh. And then you can, and then other people could also see if he needs help or not is what he said. Okay. But yeah, you give them this drink while they're waiting for their big cocktail. Oh, and wait. it's a little bit lighter tasting than some of the, is that like a comp drink that everybody gets or I don't know if it's comp. That's a good question. Um, I should ask them so if that. you're like automatically given because I know drink. it's on the menu. Okay. Um, so I should ask him if that drink is comped or not, yeah. but I think it's just something they can offer and whip up super fast. Yeah. So you're not like waiting 20 minutes Got it. for a drink if okay. it's busy in there. But yeah. I liked the idea. Yeah. That. That's interesting. Do you know if they're part of a restaurant group or are they independent? Churco? Yeah. Oh, I have no idea. I wonder if they're independent. That's kind of cool. Well, they got, so I guess the bartender had been to places like Alice and um, Wicked Rabbit mm -hmm. and kind of like drew inspiration from that in terms of how they were going to run okay. it and make it a little bit faster to get drinks and yeah. stuff. So super cool. cool. And I love and the, like the themes and how they tied the restaurant and the speakeasy together. I really like that too. Yeah. The little circus thing going on there. Um, so since this is a speakeasy, do people need to know any like special instructions oh, by the, by the yes. time this comes out we'll probably have put our video out as well so that information will be in there but tell the podcast great listeners. question because <laughs> i had no idea um you go up to the host in Churco and you say i want a tarot reading mm -hmm. and they hand you a tarot card and then they take you to the back okay. and they don't i asked them if they were going to do tarot readings like as an event and they said that they would think about it in the future okay. as soon as they get a little more established mm -hmm. to do things like that. But that is on their radar. So. Okay, cool. Yeah. Ooh, um, it is that. open Wednesday through Sunday, six to one. And if Churco isn't open, cause obviously that goes past that time, mm -hmm. um, there's a side door around the patio of Churco okay. and you would come in there and okay. you wouldn't have to do like the host thing you just go find the door yeah, it's, if you know you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> well cool oh I... and they also have food so oh little oh, snacks mm -hmm. okay cool late night food love I that think until midnight okay so maybe we should, we should add that to our late night yes posts. we should okay i'll tell maddie uh okay another place that i went that is completely new to me but i didn't go for work um was pacific eating house so last week i had said that i went to twisted cork actually i have a correction from last week's episode <laughs> i told the podcast last week that corkscrew wine and cheese was in regency landing and that was incorrect 
apparently there's lots of quirks going around Omaha. So there's Corkscrew, which is in Blackstone and somewhere else. I can't remember. Twisted Cork is in Regency Landing. And then there's Twisted Fork downtown. And then there's Twisted which Fork. Which is confusing. <laughs> but they are not related at right. all. Completely separate. So I went to Twisted Cork in Regency Landing. And then Pacific Eating House is owned by the same people. And that is in, I don't know what the area is called, but it's like 132nd and Center, where like in the same neighborhood as Chard or like that same strip yeah. as Chard. Uh, and that food was really good. They have a lot of seafood because it's like obviously food you would Pacific. find like on the Pacific yeah. coast. Um, but I tried the carnitas tacos and then we got Brussels sprouts for a starter. And then the person I was with, I think had like a salmon shrimp plate thing. But yeah, very good food and kind of like a upscale casual, like a sit down restaurant, but not like, a super, super fancy, fancy sit down like you don't have to make a reservation or anything so two two new places that i tried both by the same owners both had absolutely delicious food would totally recommend and aren't is the vault behind twisted cork i don't know i didn't go there is that even open yet it's about to be if it's not another because i'm gonna be are you moving over there what oh I thought you were going to say that you were going to switch to oh, bartending no. there. I was going to check it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is, it's separate from All Together okay. is what I know. And I just heard about it because it's going to be All Together's neighbor. Yeah. So if you didn't know, All Together Hospitality owns Blue Sky. They um, have that pickleball and then they also own Wonderbowl. And so those are together, but they're adding on another section for the karaoke bar. What is it oh, called? Reno's. Reno's karaoke. So they're going to add that section. And then somewhere in Regency Landing, right along that corner, the vault, I believe, is going Okay. In. Which is another speakeasy that's opening. Yes. Yeah. But that's unrelated to all together. It's just going to be like near. And that's how I know about it. I also went to that Bob and Willie's location. And then we like got drinks at Blue Sky, but this was on Friday. So when you were having, I would have worked. Had I, I, not I, had was, my I was thinking that I was like, oh, like I wonder, like all these people probably know Delaney. And then I was like, I wonder if Austin will be working. And then he wasn't. He I was only like, works I have no friends here. <laughs> like any other day, I, I would no have friends. come. <laughs> I would have known some of the bartenders here. <laughs> yeah, he works Friday mornings. Uh, okay, so. Dang. Yeah, Friday well, and Saturday mornings. Honest, both of you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that so I went to the Twisted Cork and then over to Bob and Willie's. And that was a nice little like pairing. Like you go have dinner and then get some after dinner drinks and do an activity, the little mini bowling. So yeah. yeah I love bowling. It's so yeah. much fun. Yeah. And mini bowling's harder than regular bowling. Really? Did you find like how did you do? I feel like it well, I did lose. But <laughs> I feel like it was, I thought it was easier just in the sense of like the ball is like way Smaller. less heavy and I don't know, it just felt like more natural to actually do the motions of bowling where, or of mini bowling. Whereas in regular bowling, I feel like I'm all clunky trying to like pick up a heavy ball mm -hmm. and then like throw it. And it just, I don't have the strength like that. <laughs> Did you get any turkeys? What's a turkey? Um, if you get three strikes in a row. Oh, absolutely not. Um, the very they, first bowl though that I did, I got a strike. Good I was for like, you. Off You're to like, a good this start. And then easy. it went downhill from there. <laughs> as soon as you, un or over, is it underestimate oh, it? As soon as you, as you under, underestimate it, then that's then when you lose. Then you'll exceed expectations. Mm -hmm. or that's opposite. You yeah. Lose. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you get a turkey there, you get three wild turkey shots. Complimentary. Oh. Because you got the turkey. Cool. Okay. Next and wild time, turkey is not go very that. good. Oh, then maybe it's I whiskey. won't go for that. Well, it's just something fun to do if you have like a group of group, people. Then yeah. you're like, all right, let's suffer together. Yeah. Sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Love that. All right. Anything else you want to mention before we I move on? I think that's it for this week. Cool. Okay. So follower question. So I post a question box question box bleh, on our Instagram <laughs> story every Wednesday. I almost forgot again yesterday, but I remembered in like the middle of the day. So yeah. I didn't even know it was Wednesday yesterday. I've been all over the place, I feel like. So I was <laughs> like, is it today? I can't remember. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you guys can ask us questions in that question box that we will answer on the podcast. Or if you think of a question and it's not Wednesday, feel free to just DM us. 
Uh, so the first one that I wrote down was, can we get a list of new restaurants in the old market? And I put some on this list that weren't necessarily in the old market, but that were just downtown. So you guys know how much I love Clio since that opened. So that's the first one. Also memoir. Those are by the same group. Tupelo Honey is not a local restaurant. That's like a national one, but they have like really good brunch, Southern food that is located right behind memoir. It's like in that same block. Cumbia just reopened. Um, Insomnia Cookies in the Black St- or in the Capital District, excuse me, and the Blackstone District, but we're talking about downtown here. Um, Nick's Quorum Bar and Supper Club, which Delaney has talked about on the podcast, and then Izzy's Pizza. Did I feel like I'm probably forgetting some, but I went and looked at our like recently opened list. And pulled from there. And pulled from there and then kind of came up with some off the top of my head too. Like memoir isn't, memoir and to blow honey. I think both have been open for like a year now, yeah. but I still put them on the list. They're still pretty new. Yeah. And for someone coming to Omaha, you definitely, definitely places to stop. Yeah, for sure. Um, a cattle call, like we mentioned, oh, yes. also new. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to think, oh, brunch box just opened a location in the capital district. Yep. Um, they also have one downtown. Downtown. Yeah. And that was really good. Um, where else did I go? Oh, not a restaurant. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we got a got a pretty good list there, and we do have a post up on our Instagram, but also you can search for it on our website of new spots that have opened recently, and many of them will be linked there. Then you can just click on that link and go to the restaurant's website. And we try to do it quarterly. So. Yeah. If we haven't done it in a while, it means it's coming right up. Yep. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What question did you pull? Someone said they're moving to Omaha soon. They asked for suggestions for restaurants or activities that they can do alone. I like this. I do like it. But I was like, alone? Do you mean like you want to meet people or just want to be independent? I feel like alone in the sense that like it takes time to meet people. So obviously you're not going to like sit Have at home somebody. until okay. you meet people to go with like you just want to go and explore alone for the time being okay that makes sense um i said any market this includes the farmer's markets benson vs friday the night market and market in the park in midtown crossing um summer saturdays would be fun because you don't need to talk to someone during a movie yeah um junk stock would be fun to wander about yeah, and it's coming right up it is um lords and gardens is always a really peaceful place to go take a walk or just hang out um the zoo i've been in the zoo so many times on my own it's just a nice little walk especially if you get the membership and you can just walk in and out yeah. for like smaller periods of time um Love that. i would recommend that as far as activities go i thought of rock climbing hiking or tree rush adventures in fontanelle forest Open mic night at Stories Coffee. I think they do that every Friday. Um, And Running Club at Sunny's, our favorite. Our favorite spot. (laughs) (laughs) And even if you don't want to run, like you can still hang out at Sunny's and have a wonderful time. Yeah. Um, Restaurants and bars. I always say you can eat anywhere alone. Yeah. I do true. often. So I gave you I gave you guys a list of places that I've eaten alone at oh, <laughs> recently. Wait, that's a good idea. Um, brunch box, ate alone. And I actually ended up talking to the owners, which was fun. Um, Chibo Vino. Um, it's a little bit fancier, but I mean, I felt comfortable. Yeah. Um, and you can always talk to the bartenders as well. Um, Mio Italiano. Ted and Wally is a, is a really good place. I get ice cream often there and I just like to sit in the booth yeah. <laughs> and like hang out. <laughs> um, La Casa Pizzeria. It's on Leavenworth. Idle Wine and Goods. The owner will talk to you there too. She's a yes. sweetheart. Um, B5 Brewing. It's family owned. So everyone behind there is part of the Bush family. So you can say hello and feel like you already know them (laughs) because you know their name. Um, Square Donut. It's a quick grab and go spot. Yeah. Um, But so many more. Corvette Cafe, Halatos Loco, Sugar Ledge. I like a lot of these or I like that a lot of these are restaurants that also serve or alcohol. So there will be a bar area so you can always eat at the bar. And if you're alone, then like. I mean, bartenders are super chatty. Like they'll love to talk to you. There's probably going to be other people sitting at the bar who are also eating alone. So. And bars are just great spaces. Like you don't even have to talk to the bartender. You can talk to someone sitting right next to you or join in. Sometimes bartenders just kind of make a group of conversation for you. Yeah. And it takes that like anxiety away. Yeah. 
Yeah. But yeah, so many great places. Um, but that. these are tested and tried. So <laughs> Delaney approved. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Shall we move on to events happening this weekend? Yes. So this is going to be events happening the weekend of August 15th to 18th. And we also post a what's happening... Oh, What's happening in Omaha this weekend video on our Instagram and TikTok every Thursday morning. So you can also get events that way or you can subscribe to our newsletter link in our bio or just go to our website and you'll see the little pop up and you can find links to all of those these events in our newsletter. So the first one that I wrote down was Pet Fest Music Festival, which is happening in Benson on Saturday, August 17th. I didn't realize how big this is going to be, but it says... 20 bands over two stages happening at Pet Shop Gallery. So is that just like one like location or what? Do you know what the ga Pet Shop Gallery is? So I know what Pet Shop Gallery is. It has, I know it has one stage and then I wonder if they're, and it's like a small indoor kind of standing room only type situation. Mm -hmm. But sometimes they like turn it so that the stage comes out of their garage door in the back. Oh. Um, Benson First Friday that's a big spot for them. That's okay. where they do a lot of the drag shows and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I wonder if it's going to be more of like an outdoor concert situation. Okay. Cool. But that would make sense. And then I don't know where the other stage would be, but well, there's at least one for you. Yeah. It says two stages. So you guys can go find the second stage on your own. 20 <laughs> bands. That's a crazy amount. Right? That's why, that's why All I was in one day. surprised that I didn't realize that it was that big, but I know that they do pet fest every year. So it is a, a yearly or an annual music festival. Yeah, go check it out on the 17th. Um, Market in the Park is also happening the 17th from 10 a.m. to 2 in Turner Park. There will be artisan goods, um, curated apparel from different shops around Omaha and handcrafted gifts. So mm. go check that out. And it's also paired with the Chalk Art Festival, which is also happening in Midtown Crossing, the 17th and the 18th. Um, basically, local artists transform the sidewalks. So while you're wa walking through Midtown Crossing, you can just enjoy that art yeah. space. Some of the pictures that people are able to draw with chalk, I'm like, how did you do that? But also, <laughs> like, it's not permanent. So, like, yeah. that's such a beautiful work of art to not be permanent. Yeah. I just saw, so Benson First Friday happened last week, but I saw, like, a chalk art piece in the middle of the street. I was like, oh, that looks so cool. But, yeah, it won't last. It probably got rained out uh, this morning. Did it's it rain raining. this morning? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it rain on my window. <laughs> the only reason I know. I don't know what's going on with the weather outside. <laughs> <laughs> okay um another really fun event this is happening august 15th to 17th is omaha greek fest this is so fun i have been to omaha greek fest for the past couple of years um, but it's located at the greek orthodox church downtown which if you guys know like where the mill coffee shop is it's right near there um but they're gonna have greek music greek food you can take a tour of the church lots of dancing so basically like they always have people up on stage i it's like a dancing greek dancing group i oh, cool. don't know what exactly to call that but they'll go up and like do their cool dances and then they'll like take a break and people will play music and you just kind of like sit there and eat and watch the dances and they have like the really cool cost like greek costumes on it's a really fun time cool. i've really really enjoyed it the past few years that i've gone so you guys should definitely go check that out i did not write down the time, but they're super active on Instagram. I think it's just Omaha Greek Fest on Instagram. So you guys can go check them out or click on the link in our newsletter. Yep. That'll take you right to the website, which yep. is also they keep very up to date. I yeah. saw as well. Yeah. They do a good job on, on their marketing and stuff. All right. Anything else? I think that wraps it up this week. All right. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. I'm actually not going to be here for the next two weeks. So you guys are going to have special guests coming with Delaney for the next two weeks. It'll be so exciting. Yeah. I'm excited to like listen as <laughs> a real listener rather than like the host of the podcast. So we'll miss you, Connor. Yes. I will miss you guys too. But Delaney will catch you next week. I will catch you guys in three weeks. <laughs> Bye. See ya.